there comes a stage in your life, in your friendship, where friendships will cross this line from cordial acquaintance to I'm just going to stop wearing pants around you. And the thing is, is that I'm actually not talking about romantic relationships at all. I am talking totally platonic BFF. And I know that we all have this person because this is going to be the one that you vent to about your significant other on a regular basis. And they're also going to be the recipient of your most heinous selfie text messages. <laughs> now, something I think we can all agree on is that making friends in your adult life is a very difficult process because the mutual interests between you and the goons who surround you on a regular basis are no longer guaranteed to be natty ice and college parties. <laughs> now, something that I've come to notice is that the process of making friends after you're done with the stage in your life is actually the same process as dating a romantic interest, except now you're usually paying for more of your own drinks. <laughs> so the stages of friend dating starts with a common interest. And this common interest can be anything. It can be running club, cake decorating class, cooking meth, bitching about your boss, whatever it is, that's gonna get you talking to somebody with the same interests as you. Now, from this common interest develops what I like to call the friend crush. <laughs> and I know that we all know what this is because there is always gonna be that one person that you creepily admire from afar. <laughs> and now the thing about this friend crush is that it actually kind of ends up turning into this like borderline creepy adoration, <laughs> right? So maybe you're in cake decorating class and you see this girl across the table and her frosting rosettes look like something out of a Martha Stewart Living magazine. And you think to yourself, like, I just wanna be her friend. I just wanna talk to her, right? So start some small talk. See whether or not you wanna make the move on to stage two. Now there is no way to make stage two not sound like you are completely coming on to your friend crush. But I have some do's and don'ts from an actual example that I'm gonna show with you. So the first thing you want to do is show them that you paid attention to something that they've mentioned. So hope you had fun celebrating your birthday. Another thing that you want to do is show them that you're interested in seeing them again. Let me know if you ever want to meet up. Things that you generally want to stay away from are ending in winky faces, being overly flirtatious, or really just being creepy in general. Because <laughs> the goal here, and really in any relationship, is to not cross that line between friendly and interested and creepy and irritating when you're trying to land a first date. Now, the first rendezvous is always going to be within the realm of your common interest, right? So maybe going for a run, trying a new bakery, having lunch at the office, whatever it is that connects you to this common interest. So pay attention to the types of conversations that you're going to have during this first date. Are you strictly exhausting all subtopics of your common interest, or are you moving on into more meaningful dialogues, talking about your hopes and your dreams and celebrity crush lists? Because, I mean, this is stuff we've got to know, right? So if the night ends in a hug and a, oh my gosh, this was so fun, we should totally do it again sometime, you're probably good to go for a second date. Switch it up this time, invite them over to your place, maybe cook dinner, watch the game. But if I can make one recommendation, please just make sure you clean your apartment before they come over because we all know that a nasty stink is not gonna keep the dates coming back. <laughs> so eventually you guys are gonna be hitting these milestones that are gonna further deepen your relationship, right? So yeah. Make sure you just clean your apartment, okay? <laughs> so eventually you guys are gonna be hitting these milestones that are gonna further deepen your bond. So there's gonna come a point where you invite them to your friends. Because when you guys start planning a future together, <laughs> you're gonna to wanna to make sure that they fit in in those friend outings. And there will come a point where the two of you become inseparable. You know, there's gonna come a time where you're sitting on the couch, drinking beer and eating pizza, watching the TV show you started together, and you're gonna think to yourself, this is the one. <laughs> now at this point, they've probably met your entire extended family and your mom will question your sexuality <laughs> when you continually bring this person as your friend date to family functions, right? You guys tell each other how much you love each other. You talk about how much trouble you're gonna cause when you grow old together. And there's a good chance that your actual romantic interest feels like the third wheel when the three of you guys hang out, right? So I want everybody to go out there and make a move on their friend crush. And I, I know for a fact that you all have one, right? Start tonight, Ignite Minneapolis. <laughs> Turn to the person next to you when we're switching speakers, start up some small talk. You guys have had a couple beers in you. Ask them out on a date, feel it out. Because there may come a day when your actual romantic relationship spontaneously combusts. And I know you're gonna want some support. So luckily for me, 
I have the friend from cake decorating class to help me eat an entire can of frosting in one sitting. And I also have the friend from the gym to help me run it off the next day. Thank you.